Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space. Space, Space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. The Gift of Victory. Written by a glass of whiskey. Time to conquer the humans. They almost as mighty as him. Solankians had gone before. His spies had told him that they had traveled to humans with a grand fleet, but curiously, not what happened to it. But he, emperor of mighty Arcanian people, would succeed in the place where the Solankians had possibly failed. Gathering his mighty fleet, he set course for human system Sol. As he entered the outmost planet, census reported that no human fleet was approaching. Although some Solankian ships were detected, and a lot of others destroyed, no, decommissioned. The barbaric humans had not only defeated them, but turned them into scraps truly a horror. When he contacted them, they were happy to hear from his fleet. One look at his mighty fleet and they immediately capitulated, although they said they could only speak for the gas giants as they had no control over the other parts of the system. As a welcome gift, they sent him some more antimatter fuel, anticipating that his journey must have been a long one. It was with a great delight he greeted this present and distributed it to his ships. The humans asked if there was anything he wanted to gift in return, as a form of sign of their new relationship. Impervious humans. But they could have some of his older ships. He had meant to use them for some active scouting after mines around the gas giant. But that seemed a bit superfluous at the moment. And anyways, they were a hassle. Great, the humans responded. Selankians did the same thing. Ah, of course the humans could not have won over the Selankian. They had bargained with them. The fools, they had probably got further into the system. The humans asked if he wanted some food or other supplies. Perhaps another exchange of gifts. But no, his focus was on the conquest of Sol. So, he bid them goodbye and set course for the inner planets. Through the asteroid belt, it wasn't long until he was hailed by the other humans. He hadn't even been able to detect him hidden in the crevices. Hello, almighty oh emperor. We wish to surrender. There had been an awful lot of surrendering, but if the humans wanted to, who was he to stop them? Excellent, your grace. We wish to exchange gifts as a token of this... We can furbish you with extra armor for your ships, and only ask for a token in return. This is rapidly turning into the easiest conquering, yet once again the humans gave him what he needed, and once again he gave them some ships in return. They were his seekers, meant to find hidden installations in the asteroid belt, a task they were apparently incompetent at, and so unneeded anyway for the rest of the conquering. He noticed that the ships that were sent out to do the refurbishing shared a lot of their design with that of the Selankians. Clearly, the humans were resourceful if they managed to use so much of their fallen enemy's resources. Why hadn't they done anything against him? Ah, but never mind that. With these now fueled up and armored up ships, he continued on into the heart of human system, Mars and Earth. The two crown jewels. Again, he was hailed. Oh, mighty emperor, unfortunately we've already been conquered by the Selankians. Would you like to wait? Wait, conquered? Then why hadn't he seen or heard from them? Oh no, the humans wouldn't fool him so easily. Ha! Your trickery won't work on me. My senses might see Selankian ships, but I have seen many of their ships before. In your service. They are clearly Republic ships in human control. Now he had seen what the human had been going for. Too bad it was him. On some lesser beings it might have worked. Eh, if you say so, the human broke contact. 
Another transmission was incoming. What appeared to be the Selankians. But the human trickery had come to an end. Time to finish this. Aboard the Selankian ships, the very real Selankians were mightily confused. After having conquered the humans without any resistance and some small exchange of gifts, the celebrations had been long and intoxicating. Now, what appeared to be an Arcanian ship, reinforced by what was clearly human armor, was approaching them and didn't respond to hails. Did the humans have an alliance with the Arcanians? More ships ready for battle. Finally, a fight and armor, as well as numerological superiority, it would be an easy one. Prophetic words. The Selankian ships responded sluggishly and were no match for him. His great armada made full speed for their positions where they were ripped to shreds. His conquest complete. Well done there. It was the incoming transmission from the humans. Our surrender is yours. Congratulations. He was not used to those he had defeated congratulating him, but he could certainly get used to it. I see you've lost some of your fleet, and other parts of it are badly damaged. Would you like us to repair it for you? Perhaps as a small token of gratitude, you could leave some ships behind? Of course! The third time the humans had been most helpful. A wonderful species to conquer, really. They fell over so easily once they realized the might of the invader. So his ships were repaired, and some of his ship was given to the humans. Only a small part, of course. Wouldn't want them to get any ideas in their head. And his losses had been few, so he felt quite generous. He supposed that was that. However, installing a new government was starting to prove annoying, as everywhere the humans tried to help him but always against each other. Here again, the human stepped in and fixed things up. Some key positions would be held by his personnel, and the rest would be filled out with humans. The general system could stay exactly the same. Wonderful. He was so happy that he didn't have to do the extra bureaucratic work that that entailed, that he almost kissed the human diplomat proposing it. A gaping maw full of teeth had unfortunately scared the poor sud away. Soon he grew bored. What do you actually do with the conquered species? They were so happy to help that he almost felt bad. Can't have a warlord feeling bad for his conqueries. So he gathered up his armada again, except for a small part that he had left to keep control over the humans, and left. He never got the answer to what happened to the Selankians. Those poor bastards couldn't even defeat a feeble and tiny humans. End of story. Story number two. Sweetheart, written by a glass of whiskey. Across the empty void, holes of mud, spewing forth long, slender ships. One bigger than all the others, USS Sundera had arrived. In the front, on the top of the ship, was a human in a spacesuit. He bent over as to gather all his strength before exploding back up in a scream and through all the radio channels, a simple broadcast. Admiral, the humans have arrived. The Admiral was not a happy one. Her head fell into her claws. Why? Oh, why request help from the humans? They were as subtle as a supernova, and only occasionally less destructive. Time to synchronize for that joint stealth attack. Reconfigure the network to accept the human signatures and get me their admiral. They were going to attack their hated enemy, and the humans would help, mostly because they were their biggest trade part. Unfortunately, their military strategies and outlooks could not be more different. Theirs was a dance, an elegant weave in and out of enemy territory, striking key points with focused strikes. The human strikes could only be said to be focused if your smallest possible target was a planet. That will the human transmission is incoming. Here goes nothing. Her first face to face with the human admiral. Hopefully, he would be more reasonable than the last one. The admiral was not on his bridge and was at the space suit. Um, if you're preoccupied, we can recontact you later. 
What? Oh no, this is just how I prefer it. Motivates the crew, you see. Uh, don't let them hit the Admiral. The human chuckled to himself. Wait, uh, are you perhaps the human on top of the USS Sandra? Uh, the very same. Did you like that entrance? Oh, good. Another lunatic. Let's uh, just get this over with. She couldn't wait to get away from the human then into battle. Our forces will attack the enemy stations around the gas giant and distracting the enemy fleet while the Oramada bombards the fortified planet. Already got the briefing, sweetheart. Don't worry about it. We brought a surprise. Perhaps it wasn't too late to back out of this uh, arrangement. No, her orders were absolute and she was loathed to admit it, but the humans had better ships for planetary bombardment than anything that she could bring up. Let's do this in uh, T5 men, over and out. Now, it was all in motion. All had been planned, an excruciating deal. Last minute checks were made and engines prepped for jump. All ships in the fleet prepare for jump on my command. Jump off into hyperspace, a ship beaming of all the colors from the exotic particle energetic interactions contrasted sharply to the human's dull blue. Both entered the system at high alert, straight into defensive positions. They had been expected, or rather predicted. It was good, although obvious plan to attack the main supply depot. She could see her fleet quickly spreading out, darting in and out of the fires, the shields glimmered by each strike from the enemy projectiles. Some ships exploded into a fiery red as their shields overloaded. Far more damage was being done to the stations as lasers beamed across their surface, going white hot from the heat. It was going well. Soon the main bulk of the enemy fleet would be all over them, but they be long gone by then. She dared a distraction to see what the humans were doing. They hadn't even begun their bombardment. What were they doing? Was this the special surprise, sitting by the sidelines? If their admiral was about to call her sweetheart, the very least they could do was take part in the battle. One strange thing was the USS Sundera that the screen had zoomed into. It had broken into many pieces and was now many times longer than it had been before. She was about to ask for a more detailed report, when a bright light filled the view. Had the human self detonated the ship, this was just getting weirder and weirder. A moment later, another bright light. This time, it was the fortified planet that shined like a star. But the humans hadn't even fired a single laser. As the brightness diminished, the total devastation could be seen. USS Sundra was no more, but neither was the planet. Split into large chunks that started to orbit each other. It didn't matter how far down the fortifications had stretched. Even if they had reached to the very core, they couldn't have withstood that. Replaying it in slow motion revealed a small metal slug being shot out from the USS Sundra directly after the explosion at a decent fraction of the speed of light. Apparently, the whole ship was just two long extendable railings to guide the projectiles, and one hell of a large shaped charge. Objectives had been achieved, damage to station and destruction of planet fortifications. She looked at it in a moment of awe, interrupted by a message from the human admiral. Lovely battle, must get going. Good luck with the war and uh, see you later, sweetheart. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click and click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I would just quickly like to give thanks to our tier 5 members. Elithia, Barky, Feudicule, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albarden Gusta, Savage Patch Papa, and Lord Azrakal.